everyone. Today we will be taking you through the process of acorn foraging, how to find them, how to process acorns, and then how to cook and eat them. Foraging is a really good way to connect to the land that you live in and also um, the food that you eat. A lot of times we don't spend any time with our food, let alone the natural environments where our food comes from. Um, so acorn foraging in particular is a really good way to get started in foraging. There are no poisonous look-alikes. Acorns are pretty obvious. The worst you can do is probably not leach them enough and we'll go through that process later, but then it will just be bitter. It's not poisonous at all. But acorn foraging is also a really cool way to connect to people past and present. It's a really fun communal activity to do and people have been eating acorns for thousands of years all across the world, all across North America, Europe, the Mediterranean, North Africa, and even Asia. Um, the word druid itself actually comes from oak knowledge. So people have been, um, people have had the knowledge of eating acorns and how to process them for a very long time. Um, so I want to share that with you and hopefully to connect you to the land and the, and the places and the people that are around you and your ancestors. Here in Indiana we have several types of oak. All species of oak have edible acorns but they vary in how bitter they are so it just depends on how long you want to leach the acorns. Um, but you can really pick up any acorn, leach it, and eat it. So this is the leaf of a white oak. I really like white oaks. They can come in a lot of different shapes. This is just one um, variety of shape but White oaks have rounded lobes. We also have red oaks, which have pointed lobes. Um, there are lots of different species of red and white oak. Those are just kind of general categories. Um, this is also a type of white oak. So you can see the rounded lobes here. Um, and then we also have here, I found a chinkapin oak leaf. There are some oaks that don't have any kind of lobe, at least not very clear lobes like the shingle oak which we also have in Indiana. If you're going to be foraging in an urban area you do have to be a little bit careful um, especially if you're foraging for green plants and herbs. Um, you want to make sure that you're taking them from areas that are not directly by like a road or a sidewalk or that will have been sprayed. A lot of lawns um, are sprayed or gardens are sprayed and so you want to make sure that they haven't been treated with any kind of chemical or pesticide or anything like that. Um, but when it comes to oaks, it's a little bit easier because as trees they filter out a lot more chemicals and a lot more toxins and the acorn shell does a really good job of keeping out a lot of um, water and all the stuff that comes with the water. You should still be a little bit cautious but generally um, just find a place that's not directly by a road, a busy road, or by a um, like a sprayed lawn area. But then you can pick them up. If you're concerned about the acorns, you can always wash them off um, and open them up and see what they look like on the inside. But generally, especially if we're going to be leaching them and cooking them, you don't have to be worried about germs and um, bacteria really too much. So now I'm just going to shell the acorns. I have them all here in a bag um, and I'm just going to put the meat part in here. Um, I have this that I'm going to be smashing with and then you can take another rock, just some kind of hard surface to smash it on. Um, it's nice if it has either a flat surface where you can put the acorn upright. I found that it's a little bit easier to smash it kind of like this because the natural cleavage of the acorn um, goes from top to bottom and you end up with two or three big pieces instead of a bunch of um, little smashed up pieces. One fun thing that you can do with acorn caps is you take it and you can whistle. Just put your thumbs like that. Let's see if I can get it. It also kind of sounds like a distress whistle, so be careful. You want to check for mold and for 
um, worms too. And one thing um, you can look for when you are harvesting or gathering your acorns, um, look for acorns that don't have holes in it. Because if it has a hole in it, that's where the little worms have crawled out of the acorn. So that means for sure that there are worms inside it or have been worms inside of it. Some people say it's best to dry your acorns before you shell them, um, which is probably true. It's probably easier to shell them um, once they're dried. I had these acorns for a while, although I didn't dry them. But they seem to be doing okay. So I have here the final product. It's maybe about two cups of um, acorn pieces. And as you can see, they're pretty big pieces. If you wanted, you could just leach these as is and um, then roast them and just eat them. Um, but I want flour, so I'm probably going to only end up with um, maybe about a cup of flour out of this. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to grind them up and then leach them. I decided to dry them a little bit in the convection oven, just around about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, just so they're easier to skin because I don't want those skins in my flour. It's also really easy to talk about these practices as if they're no longer practiced by people. Um, and I know that I myself talk about them in the past tense, but really this traditional knowledge is still around. It's just not as common. So I want you to understand that it is still alive and is still something that is used today, but um, just in different to different degrees. And especially with the cultivation of maize, acorns in certain areas were less relied on, um, but they're still used, especially when the crops failed. Once I skinned them, I just put them in a jar with some water, and I'm going to put it in the fridge and change the water every 12 hours. As you can see, the water did change color, but it was kind of light, so that means I probably should have just ground them up first, because once I did that, the water that came off was so much darker, which means I was getting many more of the tannins out of it. Um, so I at least could have quickened the process. But here you can also see the different layers, and the one on top is actually the fat from the acorns. Once you soak them and the water is clear, like the ones here, you know that they're ready. So this was actually the first batch of acorns that I tried. I did the hot water method, um, but then I food processed them again and I spread them out and dry them in the oven. Um, and then I processed them one last time just to get a really fine flour. And that's what you can do if you want to store the flour. Now it's time to get cooking. The recipe that I'm going to be using is allegedly an Apache acorn cake recipe. So the ingredients for this recipe is one cup acorn meal, one cup cornmeal, water, quarter cup honey, one tablespoon melted butter or oil, and a pinch of salt. So first what you do is you mix all of the ingredients together. Um, I don't quite have one cup of flour, so I'm just going to do equal parts flour and cornmeal. I think it's really important to find an indigenous recipe when you're using foraged foods because the recipes are made for that ingredient and it allows you to appreciate that ingredient for what it is. Um, if you take a recipe that you like that uses wheat flour and you just try to replace some of it with acorn flour, that can be fine, but it's not the same and you're gonna have a different expectation. Um, so I think it's just a nice way to appreciate the ingredient for what it is. Now that being said, this recipe that I have uses both acorn meal and corn meal, but both are indigenous foods. There was maize that was cultivated um, throughout the US, um, so it's still in a, a more authentic indigenous recipe. So I think overall that was a success. Um, they were a little bit crumbly, but I guess that's one advantage of the cold brew method, which is what I'm in the process of trying. They're not quite done being leached yet. Um, but I hope that inspires you to go out and try it for yourself. And hopefully that teaches you a little bit about this process of eating acorns and a little bit about the history of it. Um, and it's a lot of fun and I would really encourage you just to go outside and try it, if nothing else. Even if it doesn't work out that well, 
um, you can always refine your method.